What's up, everyone? Welcome to Cardboard for Mars. I'm Nima. With me, as always, is my buddy Nate. Hey, everyone. Hey, guys. So we're continuing with our strategy series here. We're going to talk about the second set of corporations in the base game. Yeah, and let's go ahead and uh, kick this one off with Ecoline. Okay, Ecoline. We have two plant production, three plant resources, 36 money, um, one plant tag, and then the bonus effect is it only costs seven money to, or seven plants to get a green redown. Yeah, so Ecoline. Um... You know, the first thing that comes to mind with this corporation is that that, that effect is actually a little, um, it, it's good. I mean, going from seven, you'd think that a reduction of just one plant to make a greenery tile would not be that consequential, but in yeah. fact, it actually ends up being being a big deal. And then, of course, since you start with two plants um, production, you're, you're able to kind of get your plants going pretty quickly. Yeah, totally. That that uh, one fewer plant that you need, it it can often make the difference. That's like, it, it's kind of interesting how often that turns into a greenery. Yeah, it doesn't not. seem like much, but it's over, it's what, like 13% or something like that? Like, it's a pretty big reduction. Right, right. Yeah, so like, what kind of... What kind of cards are good for Ecoline? You know, obviously plant cards, right? Anything that gives you plant production. So something like kelp farming or algae, for example. Um, it's interesting, though. Uh, a lot of these cards have fairly strict global requirements on them. So like algae that we're looking at right here, it's five oceans. That's That pretty much pegs it at a mid game as a mid game card at best, right? Yeah, that's true. And kelp farming, which you had mentioned, also has a pretty restrictive uh, requirement with ocean placement. But um, these cards are just very good, right? I mean, even even in the mid game for for yeah. uh, Ecoline, you get these down, and you're going to get a plant and a half or a greenery tile and a half out of each of these uh, usually. Um, and then there's there's other types of plant production cards that are better in the opening. Um, you know, things like Archaebacteria, uh, this is obviously very good, you can play it right out of your opening hand. And then uh, another one is another pretty common one, Design Microorganisms. You know, just mm -hmm. basically cards that, I mean, it's, it's obvious to state it, but anything that increases your plant production is going to be good. In, in general, I would say that the plant production cards that, that boost your production by two are considerably better, um, I yeah. mean, for obvious reasons. but. Um, yeah, you know, like if you buy the, like those cards that bump your plant production by one are generally pretty underwhelming. Yeah, I mean they're cheaper, obviously, so there's that. But yeah, that's that's true. So, um, yeah, it's the thing with Ecoline that I find interesting is, so we're we're sort of saying that a lot of these plant cards are mid game to late game, and it's interesting because if that's the case, then Ecoline starts you with plant production immediately. So it might, one of the reasons this might be one of the weaker corps to me is a lot of your, the engine that complements it comes at mid game. Yeah, actually, I think you're, that's a, that's a great point. And I think we've all had the experience with Ecoline where you're like, okay, I'm like the plant team, you know, like that's my job yeah. is to make plants. And then because you start off with pretty low plant production early and um, money. And money, right? You're you're like spending all your money and stuff trying to get some plants together and stuff. And then other corporations are just building economy early, and then yeah. towards the mid game, they're like making way much more money than you. And they're like, yeah. okay, I'm just gonna play some kelp farming, and boom, now I'm the plant person. And then all of a sudden, like they kind of yeah. catch up really fast in the mid game, and all of a sudden, you know, they they end up playing more plant tiles than you at the end of the game. Right, totally. You're just not building. A great engine if you're trying to go for plants early there's just not a lot there we, we already we've kind of went through most of the early game plant cards just now you know there's not a ton of them yeah so here's what I think here's what I think you want to do with Ecoline as and you know this dovetail dovetails with what we're talking about what you want to do early is you want to play some cities and the thing is you want cheap cities um, yeah. so for example you, you know like something like um, uh, corporate stronghold, for example, like this card. I didn't used to like this card this much, but it's awesome for Ecoline because 
if you can get this down early, it doesn't cost a lot of money, which means you know even though you're starting off with with low with low resources with Ecoline, you can get a city down. It boosts your economy so that yeah. you're not getting way behind in that economy game. And because you do start off with three actual plants and two plant production, you're going to want to play an early plant, maybe on turn two. And you don't want to just throw it out there naked yeah. and like have it just like open to the breeze. Uh, right. You want to play it next to your city to protect it. And so totally. these sorts of early cities are really helpful. Another really good one, obviously, is Cupola City. Yeah, you're totally, you're totally right. I've, we've both seen plenty of times with an, an eco line player just throwing a greenery out there and it's just completely unprotected. So I, yeah, I'm totally on board with that. Now you'll notice obviously um, most of the cities require energy and so like the cards that complement these cheap cities are cheap energy. Um, so for example like a card that can be very good is uh, fuel generators, right? Like I mean it does come at a disadvantage that it, it hits your economy by yeah. one but it's, it's like it's very cheap. I mean even better would be something like um, like power plant. Um, I mean, this one's awesome if you get it in your opener. I would always yep. take this with Ecoline. Um, another one that is really good um, is uh, energy tapping because not only does it set somebody else back, uh, but it's super cheap. Now, the one thing with this, obviously, with like cards like energy tapping, is that it's more effective if you're playing against people who have, have energy. You now, like, I wouldn't draft this card if. Um, you know, necessarily um, without knowing what sort of other people are doing, but it can be very powerful. Sure. I, I think probably one of the most important cards you could have in Eco Line is Protected Habitats. Yeah. So, I mean, like, that, that card's amazing. So, here's here, this, this kind of speaks to our next point about Eco Line is when you're doing the plant strategy, you are going to get a lot of incidental hate, right? So there's a lot of different asteroid cards, other hate cards that destroy plants. You know, something like, uh, I don't know, Giant Dice Asteroid or something like that. Yeah, Demos Down is a good down. example. Um, if you guys have ever tried to do a plant strategy in this game, you've probably run into this. And as eco line, you need some way to protect it. And the only way to do that in this game, in the base game, is Protected Habitats. So that's a pretty crucial card. Well, Protected Habs is amazing for a couple reasons. It's because not only does it protect you against all of the asteroids and things like yeah. that, but it also lets you stockpile plants. And so yeah. for the same reasons that we were talking about before, um, you know, because you're generating plants early and you may not have laid down the cities to get the points out of them, um, what you can do with Ecoline is you can just stockpile 30 plants and then you know you can play a city and just dump down four plants or something like that and it can let you get the bonuses for you know like the the, the index bonuses when you hit oxygen at you know eight or something or nine or whatever it is um, as well as it can prevent you from getting hurt by things like urbanized area um, or like you know um, you know things like that so things that let, let players play specific tiles between your cities because you can stockpile plants and, and play stuff out in sequence where they can't get in between your grid. Yeah, that's a, it's a good point. Uh, it j basically just gives you control. It, it, it doesn't put you under the gun of trying to get rid of your plants immediately. Yeah, now it's worth talking about that, you know, the other thing about Ecoline is that that even though you can play it pretty straight, like a, like a mostly ground game, there are certain cards uh, protected Habs being one of them that are that are that have a high combo potential that are like very powerful specifically in eco line. Yeah. So for example, one of the absolute best ones um, is Arctic Algae. I mean, this card is just uh, ridiculous with eco line. Yeah, this is just straight up good card anyway. But with with e with um, sorry eco line, it's amazing. So. We've, I'm sure we've talked about this like 20 times because it's really one of the best cards in the game. But like, yeah, you're you're guaranteed what 16? No more than that. It's 17. Uh, yeah. 17. Or no, no, it's nine no, ocean eight. tiles. Yeah, so, so 18 plant. 19. Yeah, because you. Get oh yeah, because you get one. Yeah, right? you get one. So you're guaranteed 19 plants over the course of the game, which is crazy. That's like that's gardener in a card, basically. Well, it's almost three. It's almost three greeneries if you're uh, if you're eco line. 
Right. So, yeah, like, this is such a good card to get an eco line. You want it. Yeah, and, like, totally, actually, you mentioned it, the, the greenery milestone, which is, which is clearly, uh, or the gardener milestone, which is yep. clearly where eco line is pointing. Yeah. Um, one thing about Arctic Algae is that, you know, you don't want somebody else to get Arctic Algae when you're playing eco line because it can make you compete for gardener, which yeah. you really want to just sort of passively get as you're playing your game. Right. Other yeah, cards... Like yeah, go, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, I mean, eco line, if you don't get Gardner in eco line, you're probably going to lose, right? I mean, <laughs> completely. I, and that, this is something that we'll talk about a little bit more at the end. But in general, ground game strategies just don't quite rack up the points the way that some of the other the other strategies do. Points on cards, I should say. And so yes. you really need to score a lot of points on the ground and you need some milestones, usually two. I mean, if you're not getting two milestones uh, and you're playing a ground game strategy, I feel like you're just really far behind most of the time. Yeah, and the game is set up that way, you know, with Mayer and Gardner. So you do have a chance of doing that. It's not easy, though. One card I'm going to mention is, um, which I think is kind of an honorable mention in Ecoline, is Adaptation Technology. You know, oh, yeah, yeah. This card is, is it's, I mean, it's not amazing. It's 15, which is pretty expensive, and you, but you, you get a point. But... It depends on the cards that you have in your hand with Ecoline, but adapta adaptation technology can just be ridiculous. For example, let's say you have the card Insects and you get you have adaptation technology out and you're able to play this card, you know, a couple turns early. I mean, yeah. Insects alone could be a bump of 3 or 4 to your greenery production, you know, or your plant production early on. Um, the other thing is that you'll notice, like we talked a little bit about how stringent the requirements are on cards like kelp farming, yep. um, you know, or like uh, other, other really good plant production cards. Uh, let's see here. Where are some of the other ones? Like, um, I don't know, tundra farming or just like any of these cards. Sure. Um, basically the adaptation technology will help you get them sometimes a turn, sometimes two or even three turns early. Probably not three, but like, yeah. I, Come I, on, I man, think three. That... It's three. <laughs> okay, three. Five turns early. <laughs> yeah. No, I, that, that's totally a good point. Uh, this is one of the corps that would benefit the most from adaptation technology. The other one being Inventrix, of course. But um, Yeah, yeah. I mean, with Inventrix, it gets it gets pretty crazy because you're, you're plus or minus four. But yeah, I totally think that's a good point. Um, the, other, the other really fun card to combo off of this is, um, oh, shoot, is it a... Uh, Viral what is it? Some generators? Sorry. Viral enhancers. Viral enhancers. Sorry. Yeah. Viral enhancers. I mean, this card is a card that I've I've gained more and more respect for. Um, I mean, this thing can just be completely broken in certain situations. Where it's absolutely best, I think, is with animals. Um, and so, if you have, and that doesn't necessarily dovetail perfectly with Ecoline, because I think really with Ecoline, you really want to just be like crushing out plant production, but. Um, usually what happens is that at some point, you know, you start getting cards like fish or birds or other kinds of things and, and then en enhancers just goes off. Um, and even, even with Ecoline, you still get the passive benefit of getting an extra plant every time you play a plant tag. Yeah. And that adds up. I mean, that really adds up if you're playing a bunch of those cards. Yeah. Especially with a corp that only needs seven plants to play a greenery out. All right. So a couple other things I want to mention, um, so I want to mention these cards too, uh, the um, the oxygen bumping cards. So let me just pull this one up here, Steelworks. I've seen players play Ecoline before and they don't have a lot going on early and then they play, play a card like Steelworks and they try and get their energy production up. This is mm. not what you want to do with Ecoline. No. Because you're cannibalizing your own points. You want to be playing greeneries. And in fact, sometimes it's worth, if you're in a draft situation, uh, just just making sure to cut these kinds of cards if they come through your hands because you you don't want people competing with you for your own um, your own oxygen bumps you know like right. if somebody gets steelworks down and they play and they bump it the oxygen six times I mean they got so much value out of that they got six points which really comes from you and they generated you know twelve uh, steel or something like that with this yeah. particular card. So those are all points that should be really going to you. That's really, yeah, I mean, and that's just a kind of a good strategy tip overall. Like if, let's say you're a Helion, you don't want other people competing for your heat. And, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Like if you've if you got an ocean generation 
strategy. You know, you want to be the one that plays all of them. That's just a general thing to take away from this. Totally. Um, so, what would you what would you rate Eco Line, Nate? Well, let me let me just say that um, I think Eco Line sucks. You know, I mean, come on, <laughs> let's just be honest. Like, here's here's my problem with Eco Line. Okay, number one, Eco Line is boring. Like, I just don't like <laughs> playing Eco Line. I mean, it's like you start off with so little cash, and then if if people are playing right, like they're just gonna like you know destroy all your plants. You know, I mean, it's just. You know, like if, if there's an eco line player and they get any kind of plant production, you know, and they drop a city down, well, next thing you know, you know, like everybody's playing nuclear zone and everything like right around your cities. Like you just have such a target on your back with it for a corporation that's just like not fun to begin with. It, it, it like leads to these situations where like, you know, you're getting destroyed by everybody playing the, you know, the corporation that's boring. Right. Anyway, what's your, what's your letter grade? Well, okay. Well, that was just all my like my feeling about Ecoline. <laughs> if you want to know how I really think it is as a as a corporation, I think it can be good. I mean, if you have the right cards in your opener, um, like if you have protected halves in your opener with Ecoline, yeah. it, it can be strong. So I'm not saying that Ecoline is like a bad corporation. I just I think it's miserable to play it, and I would give it. I mean, I think I would give it a C plus. Really. Um, that- what was that? Really? That's that's higher than I thought you'd say. I mean, I think it can be good. I just, I mean, I think it, I almost view Ecoline as sort of like a combos, a combo strategy. Yeah. Okay. Well, for me, I'm more C minus. So I think it's like entirely, to really win with Ecoline, I think you need protected Habs. I think you need viral enhancers or something like that. You need a really good. You need to be lucky, in other words. Um, so there's a there's a story uh, that we have. Uh, Nate and I played this game, a uh, three player game, and I was eco line, and I had probably the greatest ground game I've ever seen in the game. Period. Would you agree with that? It it was it was pretty amazing, like. At least that I've seen. So, like, you know, there was probably, I had probably four or five different cities completely surrounded by greenery tiles. And I still lost that game pretty hard. Yeah, you, like, lost, I, you were third place in that game. <laughs> right. It's, it was just ridiculous. So it's like, I did that perfectly and I still lost really hard um, because there's just no points in the cards. I mean, that's just kind of the story of your whole terraforming experience. Game, right? <laughs> <laughs> do you do you oh, ever feel like? <laughs> well, man, you convinced you... me, man. Ecoline's a C minus. In fact, I'm I'm changing my grade to D plus. I think. Oh snap! Ecoline just sucks. All right, <laughs> enough about Ecoline. Um, right, let's move on to my favorite corporation in the entire game. Now, I'm not saying it's the best corporation, but it is the most fun to play by far, which is Mining Guild. Okay, Mining Guild. Start with 30 money, 5 steel resources, 1 steel production, 2 building tags, which is interesting. And then, so every every time you play a tile onto the board that has a steel or titanium production, well, not a production, a steel or titanium resource on it, you get a steel production. So, Nay, what, what's, uh, what's so fun about this? Okay, so here's the thing about Mining Guild. Mining Guild, this ability changes the value of every card, right? So any card that plays a tile to the board suddenly now has a rider on it, which is increase your productivity or your, you know, your credit production by two, essentially, right? I mean, it, it comes in the form of steel production, but still, it's like a bonus of two money production. So you mean every about card it, you... Sorry, every card you play that goes to the board. You mean? Yeah, because you're gonna play it. Yeah. You're gonna play it onto a onto a onto some sort of mineral resource and get that bonus, right? Right. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. So like, take take a card like um, I think there's that card, corporate sponsors or something like that. Um, what's that one that bumps your your thing by two? Um, oh. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I, anyway, I can't remember what it is, but basically. It, it basically increases your credit production by two and it costs six. Like, yes, well, think, about, sponsors, you're right. think about how much value, like that card's pretty good. Like if you have that card in your opener, you're like, okay, like sweet, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play that card. It bumps my economy by two. 
Yeah. You basically get that card on every single card in the game that plays a tile to the board. Right. I mean, that's just like amazing. Uh, yeah, with with you know, with some exceptions, sometimes you're not able to not all of those tile placement cards are going to work out exactly that way for you, but I think you're totally right. Like uh, something like mining area or mining rights is kind of what we're talking about. Things that will allow you to play to the board. Yeah, exactly. So like you take a card like mining rights, like think about how insanely broken this card is with with mining guild, right? Like you play this you know, like Mining Guild starts you off with five steals. So you take this in your opener. You play this on a Titanium Square, for example. You get a, a Titanium Cube back, which gives you three credits back. You get a bump to your Titanium of one, and then you get a bump to your Steel of one. I mean, yep. that's like, that's just busted. It's so good. And then, you know, like, let's say, let's say, you, I mean, there's all kinds of opening starts. Like, let's say you have Mining Rights and you have, like, mining um uh what's the other one mining area area like you can yeah. play the, you can play these games down on the bottom part of the board adjacent to each other and you're just like you're just going off i mean your 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 steel production is going to be like at four or five by the end of turn one right totally yeah and the uh, the other kinds of cards that can do that for you are the the ocean cards like ice asteroid yeah that, i mean some of the a... most most fun starts i've had with with uh, with mining guild are like having ice asteroid in your opener, and you take those two. You take the titanium and the steel resource ocean bonuses. I mean, it's just insane. Yep. So you can combo that kind of stuff. Any like any of that generation, you can combo with some other cards like um, uh, medic lab, medical lab, I guess. Um, which. You know that allows you to generate a lot of money based off of your building tags, which, as mining guild, you're going to get a lot of. You already start with two of them. Yeah. Well, it's here's here's what it's worth talking about. I th I see players play mining guild and and they they just don't really understand how to play this corporation. The thing about mining guild is that you have the opportunity to get such high steel uh, production that you really, really, really need to be focusing on steel cards be, or building tags. Building cards, yeah. Because what happens, what can happen is like in the middle game, you can end up in situations where you've got like 10 or 11 steel production and you just run out of cards. You run out of, of building tags to play the steel on. Yeah. And so what you want to be doing is, is, you, is like even early on, you'll take a turn, you'll take some hits for efficiency to just draft more building tags. And like there are cards that I would I would generally not play um, or I wouldn't be excited about playing which suddenly become much much better in in a game in a in a, in a, with this corporation. For example, like Protected Valley. Like this is a good card, but it's pretty expensive. When you have just like a surfeit of of steel, you this card is amazing, right? I mean it's it's yep. a it's a, a greenery tile as well as a, a, a bump to your productivity. And you can just dump a bunch of excess steel into this. So these are the kinds of cards that you want to take early, understanding that you're going to need them in the late game. And when you have, when you're focusing so much on on building tags, cards like Medical Lab just become insane. Like I've had I've had games where I played Mining Guild, where on generation five or six I played Medical Lab and bumped my my credits by eleven or something like that. Wow. And yeah. if you want the ultimate combo. You play yeah. medical lab and you follow it up with robotic workforce. And and I've had generations where I've bumped my credit production by over twenty by playing these cards back to back. And you can do this, you know, kind of middle middle late, you know, uh, you know, like sort of late middle game or whatever, like where you still have three or four generations left and you just like basically generated forty or fifty credits. Yeah, that's nuts. So then like <laughs> it's such a fun combo. Then, then go next. The next combo would be playing Advanced Alloys. That's a pretty good card for this. Advanced Alloys is great. So, I mean, here's the thing about Advanced Alloys, and I also I feel like I see people play this card at inappropriate times as well. Yeah. Is that if you buy this card from a draft, it costs you twelve to play it, right? Like twelve is mm -hmm. is a decent amount. So that basically means that you need to expend twelve resource cubes before you're getting any value back. Right. 
Right. Right. So the thing about Mining Guild is that you can get that, you can get your payoff back out of this in like a turn or two if you're generating eight or 10 steel, right? A turn. So advanced alloys in in this corporation is great. It's also really good in inter, interplanetary cinematics if you have it in your opener, uh, right. because you start off with twenty steel. So like you're basically going to play advanced alloys, and you you instantly get your money back out of that card. And then for the rest of the game, everything's gravy. You know. Right. So like. Yeah. This it, in general with advanced alloys, you really it's only worth playing if you get it. Early to mid game, yeah, I think that's true. Or if you really, really need a science tag, but I, but the thing yeah. about you can see though, like let's say you play advanced alloys and you're generating, you know, nine steel a turn. That's twenty seven credits a turn out of steel. You're mm -hmm. gonna need a lot of building tags to keep to keep playing cards to keep, to use all of that steel efficiently. So. You, you really like I feel like the best strategy with mining guild is to lean really really hard into building tags and draft every single one that you can almost and and then boost up that steel production so that you are just dumping out these building tags at the end of the game yeah that's totally fair so like and we, we already mentioned this earlier but your the milestone you're pretty much going for is builder here you start with two building milestones um, so yeah that's the natural place to go there and it's pretty pretty easy to get with mining guild yeah i mean you should be able to get it there you know sometimes tharsis and sometimes interplanetary cinematics can compete with you because they also start with a building tag yeah um but you really should have the inside edge on that um partly because those corporations also want to be doing different things a little bit um so if you're true to what mining guild is trying to do you really you really should be able to lock up builder mm-hmm one other thing I'll mention is that uh, cards that I think are underrated in um, in the in with Mining Guild are the science tag cards that also have a building tag. So, for example, mm -hmm. like Mars University, Th these cards, Mars University and Olympic Conference, are like they're they're very they're deceptively good with with uh, Mining Guild. And the reason is this: number one, they're sinks for your steel, and they have points yep. on them. But they're also science tags. And so if you find yourself in a situation with Mining Guild where you sort of passively build up some, some research tags with just like good cards, like uh, the ones that I just showed you, as well as cards like Natural Preserve. And, and you know, Natural Preserve is great because you get the, you get the um, tile placement as well. Suddenly you'll, you'll look at your board and be like, wow, I've got, I've got four science tags. And all of a sudden you're in striking distance of all of the really good science payoffs like... Um, anti-gravity um, you know which I think mass and, converter and, so. yeah and like oh I, oh I don't have it on here but well you can get like AI central like suddenly you're getting AI central going for free essentially with all that because it's a steel card as well yeah anti-grav which Q agrees is the best card in the game <laughs> um, so you can you can sort of back end into a science strategy with mining guild in a way that that does not punish you if you have those cards yeah, that's cool. That's I like that. It's a nice little secondary benefit. All right, so well, what do a couple, you... couple other cards here. Okay. A couple other cards here. So we should mention um, just a couple cards that are good with, with almost oh, any yeah. corporation but are really good with uh, Mining Guild. Electro Catapult. I mean, if you have this card in your opener, it's just really good with Mining Guild um, because you're, you already have a, a steel production to start with, so you have a way to take advantage of this card immediately. Yep. Another one that's pretty good, um, though not I, I would prefer Electro Catapult, but another one that's pretty good is um, Space Elevator, which again gives you another way that you can sell the steel. So those cards are pretty good. And then an honorable mention, if you get if you're in a situation with Mining Guild where you've built up some some production steel production, but you haven't really figured out or gotten enough building tags to play them, a card like Aquifer Pumping can be really good. It's basically a card that lets you convert steel without cards into into an advantage on the board, and so I don't I don't love playing Aqua for pumping with uh, Mining Guild. Like I'd prefer to play other building tags that are cheaper, you know, that are just better value altogether. But um, this can be a fail safe for you if if you just don't have the other combo pieces. Yeah, I think yeah, I, I would say this card. I would only really want to play this with steel. 
I think it's just a little too expensive. It, it is expensive. I mean, if you do the math on this one, I think it comes out to, you know, like you really want to be getting four or five ocean tiles down before you're pretty happy with it. And even then, you know, you're, you're in the range of spending, what, 50 cash or something like that. So 10, 10 credits per ocean tile. I mean, you can get a lot of points playing building tags. You can get a lot more points than that with fewer credits if you have the right engine going. Right. Um, one last thing with Mining Guild is that obviously the uh, all the city cards are, are amazing with Mining Guild, basically all of them, um, because you can they, they allow you uh, they're they're basically steel sinks um, that let you that let you also compete for uh, building uh, builder and mayor right exactly yeah. so if you if you find your depending on what cards you have you can suddenly find yourself uh, competing for second milestones and things like that if you get the right cards. Yeah, totally. There's there's so many building builder tags in this game that steel steel is so valuable. All right, Nima. So what do you think? What do you think about mining guild? What's what's your grade? Yeah, mining guild. I think it's a pretty solid A. <laughs> um, what? Uh, like that's yeah, man. I mean, don't hold back. Yeah, like. I don't know. You know what? I'd probably go A minus just because it is a bit dependent on getting um, stuff cards that play to the board. You know, like it, if you don't get much of that, you're gonna have a bad time. Yeah, and one thing we didn't really talk about too much is that you you start off with with very little money. Right. I mean, you you are right. If you don't get the right pieces early. Um, you can you can feel like you're just really far behind, and that you can just never quite catch. Yeah, I, I I forgot about the money. That kind of bumps this down to B plus for me, honestly. Here's what I think about um, about mining guild, and I you know like I think it's essentially needs a little bit of a different category. It, it's it's really a combo corporation, um, and we talked about this a little bit. Like, why is Credit Core an A? Well, Credit Core is an A because it's good in almost every single situation. Like, even if you open up a bad set of cards, Credit Core is just generically good, and you're you're gonna be able to to get a workable game going with Credit Core. The same thing yep. with like Tharsis and stuff like that. Is that you you just start off with generically good abilities that are going to let you compete. Mining Guild is not that kind of corporation. If you if you play Mining Guild. And you don't have anything good in your opening ten, and you don't get any good combo pieces in the first couple generations. You can just basically disappear and never catch up. Right. So here's the thing: mining guild, if you have the right pieces, is a flat A. I, I really think it is. I mean, you can you can build mining guild into just like an unstoppable force, but if you don't have the right cards, it's pretty bad. So okay, then what's your overall rating? So I guess my overall rating would be B, maybe okay. B minus, but really it ranges from A to D. <laughs> okay. Right. That's I mean, fair. you know what I mean. Um, yeah, and I, you know, like this is part of why, you know, and I don't want to like turn this into a rant on the expansions again, but but this is part of why the base game is the best is that it's it's tailored. So that these combo corporations like Mining Guild and actually Phobolog, which we're going to talk about next, they can be very powerful, but they can also be pretty weak. And when you throw in corporations or the, the expansions like Preludes and stuff like that, it unbalances the way that the corporations are inherently balanced in the, in the main game, right? Because like yep. if you have Phobolog and your Prelude synergizes with pro, Preludes, like... I mean, that's not the way Phobolog was designed. It was designed to be really hard to get titanium production going or whatever, right? You know, like, so... Totally agree. Yeah, anyway. So, anyway, but Mining Guild, if you haven't played with Mining Guild, it's so fun. And, I, you know, like, part of the thing about Mining Guild is that it doesn't feel bad, usually, to lose with it because it's really fun to just play it. Like, all these cards, you're like... Every card that comes out, you're like, oh, is it a tile? Like, where can I play it? Like, how can I get my steel production? Like, you know, it's you've got this, like, fun combo feel to it. And so usually, even if you come up a little short, it's fun. It's like the exact opposite of Ecoline, where 
you're like, well, played my plant, like pass the turn and wait for 20 minutes while everybody does a bunch of fun stuff. And then, and then like somebody like kills all your plants and you're like, okay, pass, you know, it's like, I don't know, like mining guild is, is super fun. Cool. All right. So like Nate said, I'm going to go to our next corp, which is Phobolog. Yeah, Phobolog. So what does Phobolog right. do? So Phobolog start with a paltry 23 money, but you get... 10 titanium and all of your titanium are worth one more than normal so all titanium is worth four to you also you start with a space tag that's right yeah and that, that space tag is less valuable than some of the other yeah. tags but it's you know it, it can be okay um so just first off you know you start off with a decent amount of credits here it's 63 credits when you add in the 40 from titanium um, 63 is pretty good. Like that's a that's a decent amount of starting cash. Yeah. But um, you are restricted because you they're really really pushing you towards space cards, and space cards are way less. Uh, you know, there, there are way fewer of them than there are building tags. Yeah. So with mining guild, I mean, you can start off with a light, you know, light building tag kind of hand, and you can be pretty well assured that you're going to get a lot of building tags throughout the game. But if you're playing against pretty good players, um, they can cut a lot of the really good space cards from you and make it difficult to really turn this into an advantage. Yeah, that's true. Uh, there's there's fewer of them and they're more expensive. So I I totally agree with that. Like some of you know some of the cards you might want on this anything that generates titanium right yeah io mining is super good for this right that's a lot of titanium production yeah and as you mentioned you know i mean io mining is good just in general but if you play this on turn one with uh with uh phobolog i mean each of these titanium is worth four so you're at this is like a boost of 10 to your production on turn one like that's pretty good yeah, it's expensive, but worth it. It is worth it. and then For Phobolog, at least. Yeah, and another one that's very good is Asteroid Mining. Um, I mean, this one may actually even be a little bit better than IO um, in the sense that it's it's a little cheaper. Um, yeah. You know, but IO, IO obviously has the advantage that it's a, it's a Jupiter Tag uh, multiplier in terms of points, um, you know, but... I mean, these cards are, are amazing. And then you, you don't need like these big fancy cards. I mean, even just cards like, um, you know, like we saw before, like, um, you know, mining, uh, mining rights, you know, like just getting, right. getting a card like this in your opener is super good because it just, you know, getting that titanium production is really good. Totally. Like um, advanced alloys in your opening hand is completely godlike, right? Yeah, it's having well, having uh, titanium that's worth five is just insane. It is it, that is pretty good, and th this is another example of a of a corporation where having advanced alloys in your opener is worth it because you start with ten cubes. So if you right. play this on turn one, or if you buy this out of your opener, you already you already almost got it for free because you're gonna play those ten cubes of titanium throughout the game. Right, and I think I think this is one of the corps that it's it's probably still okay to play it in the next couple generations after the beginning um more than more so than most corps yeah and it's actually worth noting with advanced alloys just while we're on the subject that if you're playing interplanetary cinematics and you're playing uh uh phobolog if you don't have really good cards to take advantage you know like building cards um right away sometimes it's better not to spend those cubes just in case you get advanced alloys Right, so mm. I mean, by all means, if you have a great play, don't wait for advanced alloys. It's a low percentage play, but if if you have one of those hands where you just don't really have the right cards to boost your production and stuff using those resources, then save them because you might just draw advanced alloys and you're good to go. Yeah, that's a one, low one, chance of that. But one other thing that um, that's worth noting is that, like when you're when you're comparing advanced or like phobolog to mining guild you kind of hit upon this and it's true which is that the value that you get from advanced alloys is higher in mining guild than it is with phobolog and the reason for that is that you the the space cards tend to be a lot more expensive so you you play fewer of them right, right. so like if you're like one of the advantages of mining guild is that you you there are a ton of like cheaply costed building tags 
that you can kind of keep this velocity going through with them that you just yeah. can't with the space cards. So, I you know overall I would say interplanetary cinematics and mining guild are a better home for advanced alloys than Phobolog, but um, it's obviously amazing if you're getting five per titanium. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, if you can if you can do that, like all the really crazy big cards like Demos and whatnot are just so cheap for you. you know? Yeah, they 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 certainly are. One other card that I think is really good, um, obviously like very good in your opener, is Phobo Space Haven. Yeah. The, the reason this card in particular is good is that it boosts your titanium production, but it also gives you a city. So you'll notice that like Phobolog does not have a natural milestone. Right. Um, you know, unlike um, you know Ecoline and Mining Guild, which we talked about today, it's pretty hard for Phobolog to actually get on the board with with a with a milestone. So if you get one of these space uh, space cities, it can really set you up in a situation where you know you've got a city or two on the board that that like is deceptive, and then you can just like buy a city, you know, and then just take take May or something like that. So it gives you a way to back end into that. Yeah, that's a pretty fun little thing that no one would expect from you as a Phobolog player. Yeah, that's right, and like. I think that it's it's generally true that you want a city on the board at some point in almost all cases because there's just ways to get plant you know greenery tiles down and things like that. Even if you're a space corporation, there's ways to collect some plants and stuff. So it's good to have a city on the board somewhere. I, w I would say, however, though, that the the probably the most natural milestone to go for is uh, terraformer, right? The trying to get to thirty five points. That's probably the easiest one overall for Phobolog because so many of the space cards give you a lot of uh, terraforming rating. I think that's I think that's true, and a lot of the space events definitely let you boost it. But um, it depends on if you're playing against pretty good players. Terraformer is a hard one to get. I mean, it definitely can be done. I'm not I'm not saying that, but usually there's somebody doing ground game that's going to quickly go for gardener or mayor. And then usually somebody gets builder. I, I feel like those are the three yeah. that go very quickly. And then sometimes you'll just play against somebody that like really pushes hard for planner. I feel like terraformer often gets the squeeze, and and um, you know it just it tends to go a couple generations later, and the, it can make it hard to get that one. I think I agree with you. I, I the more we've played the game, the less I see terraformer getting claimed. So, yeah, I think that's probably a good point. I still do think it's the most natural way to go for it, though. I agree. And, and there's a few cards, like, right out of your opener that really help you with that. So, for example, um, it's possible that you can get, like, Soleta. I mean, I, I, there's cards that I would prefer to play out of Phobolog than this, but, like, if you just have no space cards, you, you can play Soleta on turn one, and you're, you're basically going to get a heat bump a turn. I mean, that's pretty good. Um, you know, if you're, if you're aiming to get terraformer around generation five you know soleta can be a big piece of that right out of your opener yeah sure that's pretty good so like there's one card that is kind of the bane <laughs> of phobolog and nate already knows what it is that's a little card called asteroid mining consortium yeah i this this may be my least favorite card in the game just because I'm so unlucky, and everybody always has it when they play me. <laughs> yeah, so, so basically, all, uh, what happens here is this is not an easy card to play. Like, you have to have a titanium production to be able to even play it. But if you're playing against Phobolog and you're able to pull it off, it is devastating. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, it, Phobolog completely depends on their titanium production. And to, to, take this away from them early on especially is robbing them of probably 30 to 40 money over this course of the game oh man it's like if you're in the absolute nightmare scenario you know because you need a titanium production to play this card the absolute nightmare scenario is that you open up let's say you're the first player to, to go and you're like oh man sweet i got uh you know mining rights or mining area or something like that and you like play it down you get a titanium production and then next up is Saturn Systems, and they're like, sweet! And they just play Asteroid <laughs> Mining Consortium. They yeah. get a boost of four, right? Because the, the, the Jovian tag boosts them, one, their credit production. And they get a Titanium production. And they, they hit you 
for essentially 45 credits. So that's like something like an 80 or 90 point credit swing over the course of the game. I mean, and you don't if and you, it's more than that because if you paid whatever you paid for that, you know, titanium production is Phobolog to begin with, that gets added in too. So you're talking like a 90 credit swing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, literally like you know, like sometimes I just want to like flip the table and just like right. walk out and just be like, dude, that's it. I'm done. I'm never playing this game again. <laughs> yeah, it is a brutal card. It, eh, man, it it has generated some laughs though, hasn't it? I mean, more like tears. Tears. Man. <laughs> but I, but I will say this, like knowing that. I mean, okay, you can complain when it happens to you, and like certainly I've seen. How many, this this card has probably engendered more rage quits on uh, on on uh, on Steam yeah. than like any other card. This one in Demos Down. Demos Down can often be a, like a headshot, you know. But here here's the thing: like you are armed with the knowledge that this card exists, and like sometimes you want to change your strategy to, to to you know to to ameliorate it. So. Like if you're going first in a generation and you have a, a titanium production card and Saturn Systems is around, like don't yeah. lead off with your titanium production. Like make them spend some money so that at least you fade it for a generation, you know. Um, right. Or, you know, sometimes, you know, unless unless you um, you know, like if you're playing Mining Guild, maybe it's maybe it's better not to get a titanium production early um, if you have other options and and let it go two or three generations, like. It's it's a it's an insurance policy, right? Like let's say you have let's say you have a titanium producer or you have something like acquired company. You're better off maybe playing acquired company first because they can't asteroid mining consortium this, right? Yeah. So like obviously you don't want to delay your product your productivity. But if you have if you have two cards that are pretty close, like one gives you a, a steel production and one gives you a titanium production, it might actually be better to take that to take the steel production first. Now, if you're not playing against Saturn systems, then then sometimes it's worth just going for it because that other corporation would have to play a titanium producer and then have asteroid mining consortium. Yeah. But particularly right. against Saturn systems, it may be worth like going pretty out of your way to not get hit by that card on turn one or two because it is so brutal for you. For fair point, yeah. Let's try, you know, avoiding that at all costs is sometimes the way to go. So what are some other good cards with Phobolog? Another I'd thing say, you could but, do, another thing you could do is just take it before you uh, play it and just tear it up. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a really adult thing to do. <laughs> <laughs> I've been accused of being very adult many times in my life. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, uh, one of the one of the other great cards with Phobolog is a uh, big asteroid. Um, that one's really good. I mean, a it's just like a bunch of points, right? But also, it gives you a bunch of titanium back, which is the lifeblood of Phobolog. Yeah, and there's a couple cards like this. There's big asteroid, and then there, I think there's it's like smaller cousin is just asteroid. Um, what's good about these cards is that you just get the titanium back, and so they end up being very, very cheap. Um, and so these these are ones that you know, I mean, they're they're just good in, in general, but you know, honorable mention for Phobolog. Yep. Um, let's see any others. I, I guess uh, we should mention optimal arrow breaking as well. Yeah, totally. So let me pull that one up. So basically, and this kind of gets back to like, what are you going to do with Phobolog? Because you're because the way you want to play this is very very titanium dependent. Um, there's basically the way I see it two major ways to play this corporation. Um, one is that you go into more of a space event strategy where you're using all your titanium to play a bunch of space events, and in this one, optimal arrow breaking is just amazingly good. I mean, it just makes so many cards good um, because that you get you get heat production and money back and like this card can really snowball if you're playing a lot of them. And then the other way you can play is you can kind of morph uh, Phobolog into a Jupiter strat where you start trying to collect Jupiter tags. Um, that one can be more difficult and it's not as good obviously as if you're Saturn systems because you know yeah. as we're going to talk about pretty soon with Saturn systems every time you, you play a Jovian tag you get a boost to your economy and you don't get that with Phobolog. Right. 
Yeah, it's just a nice passive generation here. It's pretty sweet. Yeah, so I think that, you know, you can play Phobolog as more of like a, you know, just sort of like a, a generic corporation, you know, kind of like a value corporation, but it, it is not well suited to that. I mean, I think you're, you know, compare Phobolog to Credit Core if you're just trying to play good cards. I mean, Credit Core just destroys it. I mean, it's, you know, so... I think with Phobolog, you, you really want to be moving into, into space, and that usually takes the form of um, you know, events or Jupiter Strat. I mean, that's usually where you're going. Yep. So, one other, card, one, one other okay. card I'm going to mention, uh, which is, this is not as big a deal as Asteroid Mining Corporation, but um, it's uh, Toll Station. So... If you're playing Phobo, it, okay, this is more advice for if you're playing against somebody who's Phobolog. Um, you, if, if you're playing against somebody with Phobolog and Toll Station comes up for you early, you may want to grab this card. I mean, this, go, this goes for Saturn Systems too, but even more for Phobolog, I find. They usually play a lot of space tags. And so if, if, you, you know, if you have Toll Station early, it might be worth grabbing this. This sometimes will give you a boost of 10 or 11 in the mid game. Right. Yeah, I, I would only do that if you thought, basically if more than one corp is going to play space tags, right? Because that's not a cheap card. And if, if Phobolog is the only one generating space tags, then I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, no, I, I don't disagree with you. And we're talking about three-player games here. Um, but right. like usually you're going to have a couple space tags on the board. You know, like even, even if you're not playing space, you might have one. Well, I guess yeah. it doesn't matter if you do. But like usually people are going to have a couple. So like you can assume that you're, the other person's going to have a few. And then if the Phobolog player has seven, it's usually worth it. So, yeah. so like that's the thing is you're, you're absolutely right, Nima. Like normally Toll Station's not that good. Because you get to the mid game and like maybe there's five or six between your opponents and like that's good but it's not amazing, but once you start getting into the 10, 10 11 range, like it's it's pretty good. Yeah, sure, I agree with that. All right, so I think we're ready to rate Phobolog. What are you thinking? Well, I think Phobolog is okay. I mean, I again, I think this this of this one as being a little bit more of a combo corp corporation. But it's not as much fun as Mining Guild, and the reason is that Mining Guild makes all of these other cards different and fun, you know, like all these tile placement cards, whereas Phobolog, you really just want titanium producers early. And that means that there's like basically six cards that are just really good for you in your opener, and if you don't have them, you're kind of like, well, maybe this, maybe, maybe I don't want to play this one, you know? Yeah. Um, so I feel like it's kind of a narrow combo corporation, which is usually not that great. Okay, so I what would you it, rate it? I probably give this one a you know like a C plus, um, but again, if you have the right car cards, it can just be a straight up. Well, I don't think it's ever like a flat A, but I think it it could be as good as an A minus. Wow, but overall, you're giving it a C plus. Yeah, I go a little higher than that. I think probably B minus for me because this. A lot of the most powerful cards in the game are space cards. So if you're able to get them, and it's it's not that hard to get at least a few of them. Um, Phobolog's a really easy way to play them. So yeah, like I you're, I take your point. Um, it is kind of a combo-y corporation, but I think it has pretty pretty decent potential for high scores. But I, I agree, it's not a top tier core for me either. So yeah, B minus for me. So I think uh, I think we can both agree it's it's a C plus. All right, let's <laughs> move on to um, <laughs> let's move on to our last corporation. Um, we've we've mentioned it a few times. Honorable mention. Yep. Saturn Systems. All right. So you start with forty two money with Saturn Systems and a Titanium production. You also start with a Jovian tag, and the bonus effect is every time a Jovian tag is played, no matter by who, you get one mega credit production. Yeah, Saturn Systems is very, very strong. Um, I, you know, it's um, you, you, it, you cannot underestimate how good that that credit bump is when you play 
a, a Jovian tag. It really, really adds up. So, I mean, imagine if you're if you in your opening hand, um, you know, you just have like a gener any kind of generic uh, Jovian tag, and you play it. Like you basically got ten credits because the game's gonna probably go ten generations, right? You yeah. even get that if somebody else plays it. So like if you're playing Phobolog and, and the Phobolog player just dumps down on turn one, asteroid mining, you're like, cool, I got 10 cash, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, it, is, it is really amazing how that adds up and it's very deceptive. Like people don't realize that. But when you're playing Saturn systems like mid game, you know, like they almost always have seven or eight credit production in addition to some titanium production because people have just played a bunch of these cards. Yeah, and the Jovian cards are often played, but I think one of the the pitfalls of this corp is also the Jovian cards, paradoxically, because Jovian cards tend to be the cards that get uh, hacked the most. So you know, especially the the multipliers like IO mining. Yeah, I mean, I think that's true. I mean, that's definitely true. But the point is, and, and what Nima means by hacked is that, like, you know, you may not, if you're playing against somebody who's Saturn Systems and IO Mining shows up in the draft, like, you're going to just take it because it, they can score so many points on it. And then you're not going to draft it. You're just going to get rid of it. Right. But the thing is, there's so many just generically good Jupiter cards that they're going to get played. Like, let's say you're Phobolog and you open up Vesta Shipyard in your opening 10. Like, you're going to play this card. It's still better for you. It still generates you way more money than it does for Saturn Systems. Yeah. But Saturn Systems is like, okay, cool. Like, you got my Jovian tag, but I just got 10 cash. It's like putting a tax on every single Jovian card. And there's a pretty decent number of just, like, good Jovian cards that are, are going to be played early. Right, and there's typically too many of them to play yourself, so you just get the benefit. You totally do. Does. I mean, and then the other thing is that there's like, you know, the fact that you also get that bonus at the same time, like you're rewarded heavily for playing the cards that you want to be playing anyway. You yeah. know, um, you know, it's so like, I don't know. I mean, it's it just, it, I think that it's deceptive how good. Uh, that that ability is it just really really stacks up um, and one of the things that you really really want to do when you're playing against uh, somebody with the with with like you know Saturn systems is you actually want to not play Jovian cards if you can I mean right. you you may even like even if you're playing you know a corporation that would generically want to play Vesta like maybe don't play that one like I've, I've played people who are playing Ecoline when I'm Saturn systems and they're throwing Vesta shipyard down and I'm like that does not synergize like number one your yeah. Ecoline you don't want to be playing st space tags or Jovian tags and two you don't want to just be giving me a bunch of extra credits because you're behind on cash anyway right so you know I, I don't know I think I think um, this this corporation is very very good um you know like imagine colonizer training camp you're you know like somebody wants to play this card it's a pretty good card you know it's got two points on it you can use steel for it and you're like cool i'll just take eight cash off of this if they play it on turn three you know so yeah it's an okay card like let's say you play the game let's say you let's say you drop down not to belabor this point but like yeah to belabor this point let's say you <laughs> play seven or eight jovian tags over the course of the game even if they're good ones or bad ones how much cash do you think you generated off of that? Like, just to, yeah. like, let's assume you play a couple early, a couple in the middle, a couple towards the end. You played seven or eight tags, like, or, or let's say, let's say seven or eight tags were played all game, whether you played it or not. How much cash do you think you generated out of that? Yeah, I mean, it could be 50, 60, 70 amount of cash. It could be a lot. It could be a lot. That's like, you're talking 50 or 60, 70 cash. And, you start off with a titanium production, so you already got another 30 cash. Right. I mean, you know, you're like, I mean, Saturn Systems just starts you with a lot of potential money. And I think it's not, it's not apparent on its face, but it, it, it does. It, it gives you a lot of money over the course of the game. Yeah, so Jovian's obviously Saturn Systems lifeblood. Also, but... Uh, other parts of its basic strategy, it's just like Phobolog. You want titanium production. Space 
is a really good way to go. So, you know, stuff like titanium mine is good. Mining rights, mining area. The same kind of stuff we were talking about for Fobolog. That's true. A lot of- Although I, I will say that I think that Saturn Systems is less dependent on its strategy on space than Fobolog is. Because mm. the benefit that you get from playing these Jovian tags goes into your credit production and not into your titanium production. I mean, fair enough, but you know, those are space cards, and you want titanium to be able to play them. You do, but like, I just find that Saturn Systems is a lot more flexible, moving into a different type of more like global economy game than Phobolog yeah. is. And so, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I mean, because. You know, you're getting that extra fifty or sixty cash in credits, not in titanium, and so you you are a lot more flexible. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I there's there's uh, there's almost not a ton to say about Saturn systems that we haven't already said because like it's just powerful. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It it it's just generically powerful. It's not it's not as like flexible as Credit Core, for example, uh, because there is this like sub theme of of Jupiter tags. Um, but it's great. And then obviously it goes without saying, we already mentioned this in our other video. There's a whole video about playing uh, Jovian tags or as a strategy. You should check that out. But the, there's several multipliers that basically give you points at the end of the game for collecting Jovian tags. And that's obviously a central, uh, a central strategy for, for Saturn systems. Yep, totally agree. Yeah, so a final mention I'll say, like, if you're playing against Saturn systems, you know, really think about not playing those, like, incidental Jovian cards. I mean, you still want to draft them and then just bury them so that the Saturn system player doesn't get them, but you actually may think twice about playing them yourself, um, you know, if, if you have good alternatives. Yep, totally agree. So, um, is there anything left to say about Saturn systems? No, I think Saturn Systems is an A minus. Um, I think that it's, you know, it, it's just it's just a very strong opening corporation, and particularly if you're playing against players that are a little less experienced, Saturn Systems can just get out of hand. It can get out of hand because people are playing Jovian tags to boost your economy, and because they're just passing you Jovian tags and multipliers and things like that. I mean. I mean, some of the most lopsided wins I've had is playing against noobs when I'm playing Saturn System, and you end up with like 130 points, and they've got like 60. I mean, that that can happen with Saturn Systems. Yeah. Um, you know, so if you're playing against more experienced players, there are ways to combat against this, and and in that in that setting, I think it's more of like an A minus. Okay. Yeah, my I was gonna say A, just pretty flat A. Uh, it's really one of the best corps in the game, I think. Um, it's it's not like well, actually, it is fairly fun to play as well because some of the the space cards are just ridiculously fun. And then if you if you're able to get a Jovian strategy down, it's pretty fun to, to throw that down and be like, ha, ha, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> so it's like dropping bombs. It it is it is fun. Like it also makes for incredibly good top decks at the end of the game. Like where <laughs> yeah, where right. it's close and like if you get the one multiplier, you're just gonna like win it outright. And if you get even just another Jovian tag, it's gonna be really good. And and you know you're like drawing cards off the top with AI Central or whatever, and and everybody's watching it, and you're like yeah. flipping them, you know, like. Uh, at the very end of the game. Um, right. One thing we didn't mention is the awards and milestones strategy here. Yes. But it, it's just basically the same thing as Phobolog. I think Terraformer is the most natural one to go for. Um, I, I I mean, I guess your um, your mayor kind of back-end strategy also applies here. I actually think mayor is the best one for Saturn Systems. Um, that's a su- And the reason is this. So the the you know if you're Phobolog and you don't and you're not going into a Jupiter strategy you don't generally you're not usually that interested in playing Ganymede Colony, okay? Yeah. But Saturn Systems always wants to play this card, right? So basically, um, this gives Saturn Systems two space cities that are excellent, right? Because you're happy playing Ganymede Colony and you're also totally happy playing. Uh, Phobo Space Station, um, and so basically either way you're gonna be you're gonna be totally happy with with these. 
And if you get both, you're like a lock for mayor. And if you get one, you're still pretty good for mayor. So, and, and like I also said, is that like because Saturn Systems is, is more flexible than Phobolog in terms of moving towards a ground game, it's okay if you have a couple cities on the board with Saturn Systems. Like I just find that generally you're gonna be able to get more plants going and stuff like that because you just have so much more economy. So okay, I mean, fair enough. But I, I I disagree with you that this it's the best um, milestone. I don't I don't think that's true because Phobo Space Haven and uh, Ganymede Colony, those are very singular cards, right? Whereas there's a lot of ways to terraform that are on, especially on space cards. I think you kind of luck into the mayor strategy, if you ask me, rather than oh, here's all this asteroid, that asteroid, here's all this this convoy coming in. There's a lot of ways to generate TR as, as Saturn systems, but very few ways to get space uh, cities. That's true. Although, I mean, I'm just going to push back a little bit because the way, the way that usually you get mayor with Saturn systems is that your opener is like, you know, you get like Cupola City or something like that, or you get Im- immigration... Um, you know, immigrant city or something like that. I mean, there's a lot of city cards in the game, and so you take one of these cards. Like, you wouldn't want these cards in Phob- in uh, Phobolog very much, but in Saturn Systems, you're like, okay, cool, I'll take a city. Um, I mean, Phobolog would also want Cupola, but it, I don't think it would want Immigrant City. Um, whereas, I don't like, know, man. Like, sorry, finish no, go ahead, saying. go ahead. So I, I don't know. Get man, fired like... up, dude. Get fired up. <laughs> okay, I will. Um, like. You're you're basically one draft like getting hacked in a draft away from not being able to complete this. You know what I mean? If if someone if someone takes away Ganymede Colony from you, which is likely when you're Saturn Systems, this is just a really hard strategy to follow up on. Yeah, but I'm not saying that you like. I think that the way that most milestones work, especially for these corporations that don't have a clear milestone, is that you want to just maintain flexibility. You're going to play Cupola City with Saturn Systems just because it's a good card. Like, it boosts your economy by three, and so you're going to play this card. So, like, if you if you find yourself in a situation where you have played Cupola City or you've played Immigrant City or whatever, you have a city on the board, and then suddenly, like, turn two, somebody passes you Phobo, you know, like, Phobo Space Haven, you're like, bam, I'm going for mayor, you know, or, like, you know, and often you, you might have one of these cards in your opener, like Phobo Space Haven or Ganymede Colony out of your opening 10. Like, you're right, it's not like super common, but you know, it's, it's, it happens pretty regularly. And then you're like, from the start, you're like, okay, I just need to get one city on the board and then I can surprise play this one and then I'm, I'm mayor. You know, it's like, so I think that um, it's pretty hard to get Terraformer. I, I just think that like, you know, you, mayor is, is a better is a better one to go for if you're Saturn Systems. I mean, you don't force it. Like, I'm not going to standard project three cities, but like, if you can, if you can set yourself up to take advantage for that, of that. I, I mean, I, I think it's, I think it's the best. I, I think it's the, the ideal. You know, maybe it's not the most common or whatever, but I think it's. The yeah, ideal. I think, I think we're probably just going to be disagreeing about this one because I really don't think so. I, I, I like, I, I agree that Terraformer is not easy to get, but I think this is like much harder. Well, I think for... we can both agree that you're wrong. All right, so um, no, I'm just kidding. moving no, on. I, I think it's a, it's a fine point. I mean, you're going to go. It just depends on the cards you have in hand. But um, sure. what I would say is. Sometimes the mayor angle with Saturn Systems is not obvious. Sometimes it means you have to standard project a city at a weird time. And keep it in mind, it comes up more than you think. Yeah. Um, all right. So um, that I is all of it, the uh, – yeah, that's all of them for today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, we've officially gone through all the corpse for the base game now. No, no, we haven't. We haven't? <laughs> no, we still got we still got four more. <laughs> <laughs> oh crap! That's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> well, that's how delinquent we've been in then doing these. So look for the next part three <laughs> in the corporations video. <laughs> it just seems like we've been talking about these corporations it's for well, about an hour and ten minutes. <laughs> right. I, I guess you know I was probably thinking of when we did the uh, the turmoil corporations. Yeah. 
But uh, anyway, regardless, hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, we'll be back with part three at some time soon. And uh, until then, I am Nima, and that is Nate. And keep terraforming. All right. Take it easy. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Cardboard from Mars. I'm Nate, and this is... <laughs> Normal voice. This is how loud I'd be talking normally. Do a little louder to simulate the excitement. Whoa, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Doom. Okay. <laughs>